the human mind as a strategic weapon. Some people already look at it that way, at least tongue-in-cheek. But as KSFR's Margaret Anderson reports, the human mind has been getting close scrutiny at a symposium in Albuquerque. Sundia National Laboratories is a sponsor of the Decade of the Mind Symposium in its fourth year in Albuquerque. The event allows leading professionals in cognition and neuroscience to discuss the latest breakthroughs in research relating to the brain and the mind. John Wagner of Sandia's Cognition Department has more. This is a part of a series, and the next step in the Decade of the Mind initiative will be to go international. So the next one will be in Berlin, and then we'll expect subsequent conferences other places around the globe as we try to get uh, national and international consensus to try to move this initiative forward. It was President George Bush Sr. who first initiated the Decade of the Brain Agency in the 1990s. He declared that a decade of research should be given to the focus of neuroscience. The Decade of the Mind Symposium developed out of that initiative. Wagner explains the symposium's objective. We're proposing a grand challenge um, that we refer to as reverse engineering the brain. And so um, we'll have scientific researchers, we'll have national leaders working in this general area and the general public. So we're trying to understand scientifically how the brain functions and also how the brain processes result in what the community calls the mind. You know, if you were to describe the brain with a computer analogy, the brain might be the hardware, the mind might be the software. And so we're trying to understand how both work together. Wagner says that understanding the mind as well as brain science in general is essential to national security. There's several facets to it. I mean, the obvious one is in healthcare. Even our warfighters today are subjected to IEDs and getting injured. And so we're trying to grow the technologies to treat them. And the side uh, benefit will, of course, be general health care and treating diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. But there's another facet of this to national security that's more at the decision-making level. I mean, most of the national security challenges that we see involve a human element in one form or another, whether you talk about terrorism or economic security or energy security. You know, a critical facet of all these challenges are this human decision-making in one form or another. And so our national laboratories, uh, understanding how humans make decisions can help uh, us prepare for the national security challenges of the future. For KSFR News, I'm Margaret Anderson.